In this photo taken with a fisheye lens, a Boeing 737 MAX 8 airplane sits on the assembly line during a brief media tour in Boeing 737 assembly facility, Wednesday, March 27, 2019, in Renton, Washington. AP Photo, Ted S. Warren Boeing is making airlines nervous, they're wondering whether it's rushing too fast to get regulatory agencies around the world to approve what it says is the fix to the problems with its 737 MAX, two of which have crashed since last October, claiming 346 lives. There are big bucks hanging on how well Boeing handles this challenge. Boeing has $50 billion worth of orders for the 737 MAX, according to the Wall Street Journal, but the global fleet was grounded last month with the FAA being the last of global airline regulators to conclude that the plane should not fly until the suspected cause of those crashes is identified and fixed. But an MIT expert I interviewed sounds confident that Boeing will do the right thing. I have no financial interest in the securities mentioned in this post. As I wrote last month, the journal reported that Boeing engineers found that under certain conditions the 737 MAX's engine, which were larger and located higher and closer to the front, boosted the chances that the aircraft would tilt upward too steeply, causing the plane to stall. To offset that risk, Boeing engineers installed a Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System MCAS, in the 737 MAX, to compensate for the extra pitch-up produced by its larger engines at elevated angle of attack, AOA, noted the journal. If the AOA sensor detected too steep a pitch, the MCAS would elevate the horizontal stabilizer, the little wings on the airplane's tail, to push down the nose of the plane. The 737 MAX has two AOAs in its nose that measure air pressure to calculate its pitch. According to Newsy, in the original MCAS design, a signal from just one of the AOA sensors could trigger the MCAS to push down the nose repeatedly. If that AOA was faulty, the MCAS would push the nose down even though the 737 MAX was not actually stalling, thus sending it into a nosedive. While there is no final conclusion about the cause, a preliminary probe found that this is why Lion Air 610 crashed last October killing all 189 people on board. According to the journal in the Lion Air crash, the stall prevention system, based on erroneous sensor information, repeatedly pushed the plane's nose down. According to a preliminary accident probe, the pilot battled the flight controls while facing a cacophony of alarms before losing control and plunging into the Java Sea. An MIT expert raised a question in my mind of whether Boeing's fundamental design mistake was with the size and placement of the 737 MAX engine. That's because the potential for aerodynamic instability caused by its engine is inappropriate for passenger aircraft. As are John Hansman, a professor of aeronautics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, told me in a March 28 interview, as I understand it, at high angles of attack the nacellas, which are the tube-shaped structures around the fans, create aerodynamic lift because the engines are further forward, the lift tends to push the nose up, causing the angle of attack to increase further. This reinforces itself and results in a pitch-up tendency which if not corrected can result in a stall. This is called an unstable or divergent condition. It should be noted that many high-performance aircraft have this tendency. It is not acceptable in transport category aircraft, emphasis mine, where there is a requirement that the aircraft is stable and return to a steady condition if no forces are applied to the controls. Boeing is proposing a fix to the MCAS which would require that both AOA sensors deliver similar readings, they must be within 5.5 degrees, before triggering the MCAS to tip down the nose. Boeing's fix will limit how sharply the MCAS can tip the nose down, to no more than flight crew can counteract by pulling back on the control column in the cockpit. What's more, the fix would only allow the MCAS to tip down the nose once, rather than repeatedly, as the current version does, thus making it easier for pilots to recover, according to Newsy. Hansman argued that Boeing might consider having one more level of protection against misfiring AOA sensors which could fail for many reasons including, electrical failures such as a short circuit, mechanical failures, a bird strike, icing, software, and or a maintenance error.
He pointed out that triple redundancy is standard safety practice. As he explained, there is a fairly low risk that both AOA sensors would fail for the same reason. However, one of the issues is if one has failed it can be difficult to determine which is correct, in flight critical applications where the airplane cannot fly without the sensor, not the case here as the airplane can continue to fly, it is standard practice to have triple redundancy, this is not always a third identical sensor but sometimes something that can be the tiebreaker. Last week Boeing faced skepticism as its executives tried to calm things down. According to the Washington Post, they tried to sell a skeptical community of pilots, regulators and airline representatives on the idea that the new software would allay their concerns related to the MCAS system, even as they emphasized that the causes of the two crashes had not yet been firmly established. Peter Lemmy, a former Boeing engineer, told the Post that he was glad that Boeing plans to disengage MCAS if the sensors sent different signals. While newer Boeing jets have three AOA sensors, let me point it out, the 737 MAX only has two. If one's wrong, you can't take the average of two, and you can't use the good one, because the computer doesn't know which one is right. Let me told the Post. Huntsman told the Post, right now, we know what we are worried about. One of the challenges though is, when you start messing around with software, you have to make sure you haven't created some other problem or failure. But Hansman told me that the problems will ultimately be fixed. There is a standard testing and software validation and verification process that all flight control software must go through. My understanding is that this is in progress. The 737 MAX crashes have not helped Boeing's reputation, but this is always the case when there is an accident. This case is not dissimilar to the initial problems with the A320 when it initially entered service. Boeing must get the improved software and training material approved by the FAA, EASA and Canadians and get the airplane flying again. I am not an aeronautical engineer but if there was a way to change the size and or placement of the 737 MAX engine so they did not boost the odds of a divergent condition. I would feel better about flying in one.